So now we want to get new ground points. Uh, we removed all the classifications, so we don't have any classification except some points are noise points. So let's run last ground. Uh, and last ground is just fine. Um, there's another tool called last ground new. That was really only designed for complicated terrain where you have cities right next to mountainous areas. Because last ground is either good at preserving the mountains or cutting off the cities. But if you cut off the cities and you have mountains, then you cut off the mountaintops. Or you preserve the, city, the mountaintops, but then you don't remove the big buildings. And last ground new is better than that. Last ground new was really written for the Philippines, where they have a national LIDAR project happening and uh, lots of complicated terrain next to villages. So this time, as you can imagine, we're starting with the noise tiles, with the, we should say denoise tiles. Tiles noise is now the input. And again, we use the wildcard to add all of them. And still, we, we still have the buffers. And if we uh, look in the header, we also see now that the last tool that processed it, it's always a tool that's written here. So what kind of terrain do we have here? Do we have cities in there? No. Towns? No. Nature. Yeah. Wilderness is mainly interesting if you want to have every little feature on the ground. If you're an archaeologist, you use wilderness. Otherwise, nature is usually a, a, good, uh, a good default. We need to have the highest computer. And you can do that in one step if you have a licensed version of Lasso. Only that. And this is the licensed version. So you can... You can uh, it will store the height of every point above the ground into the user data field. And that's needed by last classified, as stated clearly in the readme file. And of course, as always, we need to select an output directory. Tiles round. As you can imagine, because we're running last round. So tiles ground is the output directory. And we again run on all cores. Do we have a lot of steep areas in here? No. If we had a very steep mountains, I would increase the pre-processing to do fine or extra fine or even ultra fine. It's very steep mountains. Uh, because then it does more work to find the initial terrain. And I'll tell you a bit more about that when it's running. I press run. Now, actually, usually, I would now try on a single file first. Oh, stop. I hope you can remind me. So I need to cancel now. And be very careful when you cancel. Don't use the X in the, in the corner. There's a cancel button here. Okay, then if you use this, you lose everything. Don't do it. So I must also ignore the noise points. Otherwise, I will consider all points for being ground points, but I don't want to consider the points that were classified as noise. The set, I want to keep the noise point around so I know what is noise, but I don't want to use them anymore, because the reason I removed them is so they don't affect what I'm doing. Last round, list of files, course 4, ignore class 7, you know, ignore the noise points. But keep them in the file, mainly I just don't touch them. I don't look at them, I just write them back out. Everybody has a different idea, and most people now decide to use 7 for all noise. High or low doesn't matter. Because what is called high noise has now been used for something else, for like rail or for like wire. I think right now we have only one class that we use for marking noise, and that's number seven. That the fact that it's called low noise is because the first specification I used to type the names, it's 
still says no no. So now we're running on four cores, and if you if you look at the blank window, you see how it's processing one after the other. Uh, maybe now is a good time to explain what this algorithm does. Again, this is an intensification algorithm. So how does it work? Well, this is roughly how it works. Uh, the step size of five meters, it is five meters because of minus nature. Minus nature, oh, there was no minus nature. The, nature. the default mode uses nature mode. And that is five meters. So it's just a shorthand for five meters. You could also say minus step five, but that's um, yeah. So the default mode is that nature mode with five meters, and it puts a grid of five by five meters for the entire data. And again, it keeps everywhere the lowest point of all last returns. It only looks at the last. And that is considered the initial ground. The initial ground. Now, if there is a big building inside, which covers a 5 by 5 meter cell entirely, then the lowest point will be somewhere on the roof. And hence, you will have the roof being part of the ground. That's why you need a bigger step size when you have buildings. Then there's something called, I uh, can't see it now here because it's somewhere written out here, it's called spike. Then it looks through this initial guess for anything that goes like this or goes like this. We did already a noise removal, so these spikes are less often happening. This was uh, done before I had last noise uh, because sometimes there was one point down here and all the other points were here, and then you have one spike. And then I remove this from the ground estimate. And then I make a triangulation of all these points. And that's my initial ground, very coarse. And what do I do then? And then I shift my grid slightly, and I do it again. And then I shift my grid slightly, and I do it again. And I shift my edge slightly, and I do it again. And when you set minus fine, minus ultra fine, or minus extra fine, you say how often I shift that grid. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot more time when you shift it very often. And then I take, in the end, I take all these points from all these grids, because when you shift the grid, a slightly different point becomes the lowest point. And then I combine them all, and that becomes my first ground estimate. So if I have a, if I shift it four times in this direction and four times in this direction, that gives me 16 very coarse ground estimates, which are then combined together into one start ground estimate. And that's what I'm starting from. And then I'm densifying this tin. And then the bulge one, um, then I, I, I try to insert every possible point that's cl close to this tin into the tin. And I allow the tin to bulge up a little bit, depending on, or also bulge down a little bit, depending on the neighborhood. And this bulge controls that. Um, and if the tin, if that new point, and here's the tin, here's the new point, I compute the bulge, so the bulge gives me a little bit more than the, ex than the current tin, and then I have an offset somewhere, the offset is actually five centimeters, so if that point minus the offset falls under the bulge, then I say, okay, you're also a part of the ground. And then I insert this point into the tin. And I do this for all points once, and then I do it for all points again, and that's it. And then I have my final points. And that's, it's called tin densification because every step makes the tin a bit more dense. Just to give you an idea. Uh, that's more or less the algorithm described, except my bulge is different from the trigonometry that is used in the original reference. 
and that's why this algorithm is so fast because I'm avoiding all the sine and cosine computations. Um, and uh, the other software that implements um, the, the same algorithm is TerraSolid. They implement it including the trigon trigonometry. Sometimes it's better, sometimes it's worse. I did a large study of terrain in the Philippines and every time my settings were clearly outperforming the TerraSolid result in terms of not cutting off so many rocks and out you know, nice things in the terrain and they do flood modeling so for them it was important to have all the rock formations all the river banks preserved and there was I did a big tour a two months tour to 15 universities and every time we did one thing and then compared their terra solid ground classification with my Lasso's ground classification and usually Lasso's was never worse and a little better, I thought. Um, but fundamentally, both probably just need to be tuned and get very similar results. However, you'll uh, price-wise, <laughs> you'll pay a lot more for TerraSol, and it's also not quite as fast. So let's exit this and start the next tool. Um, and this tool may not really be needed for forestry metrics alone, last classify, because as I said before, I would use all the points and then cut out the few buildings using some other means. If you are working in plantation forests, if of course I do urban canopy modeling, that's different. Then I need to find the buildings with last classify. And uh, so let's run it to see if we, so last classify, finds buildings and trees in airborne LiDAR point clouds. And maybe this time we do a little experiment again with just one tile. So, Brazil, 2013. Now our results should be in tiles ground. Yeah, here they are. And I'll pick some random tile now, this one here. I have a look at it to make sure there is really ground classification. Yeah, let's also look at the noise points. Are they still there? Yes, they are still here because we did ignore noise, uh, ignore class seven. Had we not done this, then those would again be either become ground or... So, so we can check it. Yes, those are all five clearly noise points. Most likely not because of the spike, uh, but it's, it's better to exclude them then. So X, 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 minus, 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 G, I look at the ground, T, I triangulate, looks pretty convincing to me. I pick a bigger area. Yeah, it's good to me. 